K6, wrapping up. 35-year-old male restrained driver. Had an MVC, front impact. Got a little bit of a little problem with his eye there. A little Horner syndrome. Some, But no bruising to the neck. Now what? Yeah, CTA for the win. So this is concerning for a cervical artery dissection. There's two main flavors of this. You got the carotid artery and you got the vertebral artery. Okay. They're basically blood vessels in your neck. Don't worry about the difference between them. Minor trauma in approximately 40% of them. This is everything from car crashes to I went to see my chiropractor. All kinds of weird stuff. Okay. Very debatable about how much of that is. It's definitely a little bit of signal. So watch out, you DOs. Uh, <laughs> Sudden deceleration therapy. No, no. Uh, so minor trauma is in the minority, though. Also, connective tissue disorders. 100% of the people on your test are going to have like Ehlers-Donlos or Marfan syndrome. Only 20% of real-life patients have this. So don't rely on that to save your bacon. But in young adults, it's about one-fifth of strokes. So if you got something that looks like a stroke and they're 29, this is much higher risk. So you get head or neck pain because you've got a dissecting vessel. This is actually very similar to what happens with aortic dissections where you can actually have them without chest pain. And I'm sorry, medicine's not fair. Uh, Horner syndrome in a quarter of patients. If you really care about why it's a partial Horner, you're a nerd and should feel terrible. But look at the eyeballs and make sure they're symmetric. You can also have tinnitus or audible brewery, but you may have ischemic signs in about two thirds of these patients. But don't worry about the difference between the two. You're going to treat them in the same way. And what is that treatment? You're going to call a surgeon after you get some imaging, and then you're going to put them on something that thins their blood a little bit. The best treatment, the best study for this is probably an MRI with MRA. You can totally get away with the CTA, which is what you're going to do in the community. Ultrasound, sorry, it's not good enough. Okay, you might see something that's abnormal, but it's not going to adequately define the anatomy to help you figure this out. So there's the CADIS trial. Uh, this was the cervical artery dissection trial. They really stressed that one out. So it wasn't the CAD trial. Uh, so antiplatelet therapy with aspirin and Plavix was roughly as good as anticoagulation. Much easier, something we're more comfortable with because I'm more comfortable with aspirin and Plavix and heparin. There's nothing wrong with putting them on antiplatelet agents as opposed to doing anticoagulation. If the dissection extends into the skull where it's actually getting into the brain proper, there's some signal that anticoagulation may lead to increased brain bleeds compared to antiplatelet agents. But you can use either. Really what you're gonna do is you're gonna make the diagnosis, you're gonna call the guy that you're admitting it to and say, hey, you want me to start the heparin or you want me to start them on Plavix? But you're probably not gonna do both. Do we have any questions? Uh, and to answer Brad's question, you were, you were saying that the community, like the patients believe that lytics are good for you and a lot of neurologists believe it. Uh, it's true. There, there's been a huge amount of publicity amongst getting the word out that we should, if you're having stroke-like symptoms, you need to get the emergency department right away, which is a really good and bad thing. It's good because if you're having a stroke, you should get emergent care right away, okay? That emergent care might be supportive stuff like aspirin, making sure that you don't stop bleeding, that kind of thing. It, but the problem is when you tell people, hey, rush to the ER, they got this miracle drug that's going to fix you, they're expecting lytics. That's what they're expecting. And so it's this really one-sided ad campaign with a lot of big pharma money on it that has really won over a lot of people. It, neurology is also a very frustrating field. They have very few treatments. They have tried so many things to fix stroke. They, they give magnesium. They, they've tried all kinds of stuff, and none of it worked. And so some of this is the very real human thing. Like neurologists are not bad people. They just don't have a whole lot else to offer them. And it's really frustrating to say, yeah, you had a stroke and I can't do crap about it. That's a really hard thing to do. It's really hard to stand there and not do anything. And so that's one of the reasons I think that they've really latched onto this is that there's not a whole lot of competitors out there. It's the same reason they latched onto the endovascular stuff way earlier than I was willing to. Back when it was largely killing people until the last couple of years and those positive studies were there. They were already on board because they wanted something to do. Cardiologists want to cath people. It's part of what they do. It's really hard to say, I'm a, I'm a gastroenterologist and I really think you should never get a colonoscopy. That's hard to do. Um, it's really easy for us. I'm an emergency medicine doctor and you should never go to the ER ever again. That's actually something I want to tell a lot of my patients. <laughs> uh, but but it's, it's, it's really hard because that's their specialty. And it's hard to say, look, I'm going to give you an aspirin and I'm going to have the nurses take care of you in, in a rehab facility for a couple of weeks. And that's the thing that's going to help you. 
That is hard because we're egotistical sons of guns and we really want to do something. And that's not because they're terrible. I, I think a lot of people think that I have huge beef with the neurologist. I don't. They're, they're just in a tough spot that this is something that probably has damage before we can get to them. That if you had an ischemic stroke and I could get TPA into you within three minutes, you'd probably do very well. And unfortunately, the transport times and the time to get imaging and so forth is so tight, it's unrealistic that we can actually save tissue that is likely to infarct within five to 10 minutes of becoming ischemic. That is the underlying issue that probably separates the really positive cardiology literature, where you can have ischemic heart tissue for an hour or two and get away with it. The brain is less forgiving. And so that's why so many things work in cardiology and don't work in neurology. So... Remember, intracranial hemorrhage, treat it like a dissection. Major stroke is a STEMI. Minor strokes and in STEMI. TIAs are unstable angina. Thanks, guys.